Well, I got I got very excited by you working with uh, I guess working within a Noah Baumbach world and his uh, verbal rhythm. So he's one of my favorite storytellers because he often features scenes with stacked dialogue where family members are having several conversations simultaneously, and it's a it's a fun bounce back and forth. But then you get to come in to color in that with your lights, framing, and movements. So when you first read this mind trip of a film, how was Noah's creativity inspiring your own? What was firing off for you creatively from the onset and what were you most eager to capture? Well, I think, you know, when I first came on board, Noah had already had a conversation with Netflix about shooting on film and, mm -hmm. and, and a desire to shoot anamorphic, you know, which I thought was, uh, which I thought was the way to go with this. I mean, it's it's obviously a novel that was written in the 80s and it's a, it's a world that is sort of non, there's a lot of details in there that nod to the 80s, but it's never sort of like explicit, you know? So it's 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 a kind of, um, it's its own thing and its own creation, you know? You know, he wanted to reference the aesthetic of those late 70s, 80s movies, you know? You know, the middle section of the film definitely owes a, a strong debt to kind of Spielberg, you know, Spielbergian filmmaking, yeah. you know, with and a sort of disaster movie um, element to it. So he had these kind of very grand, you know, big ideas, you know, that, that hadn't, uh, you know, big visual ideas that, you know, his other movies hadn't called for necessarily, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, it's quite, you know, a lot of his other movies are quite internal and, you know, in terms of the geography and the, um, and the sort of examination of, of, of the human condition and the human family, you know, and, he, and even though that that exists in this, you know, as you know, the the first third of the movie feels like that, mm -hmm. uh, sort of comment on domesticity and sort of academia and, and and a satire on those things, and then it sort of blows up and expands into something completely different uh, in many ways, and um, and uh, you know, and the last third of the movie turns into kind of a, a noir, so. You know, it was it was it was a tremendous amount of fun to to sort of flex flex different muscles for me and to um, and to really uh, realize Noah's you know Noah's sort of very very definite visual ideas for this movie. I like what you said about how the film evolves, like it, it goes from one thing to the next, and that's what's exciting. To, to see your work as, uh, you know, there's elements in it that feel like a horror film or an action film. And um, in the parent characters, they're, they're kind of trying to do probably what you may be feeling, trying to casualize or normalize the chaos for their kids. And so yeah. did, it, did it feel much like that on set? Like as there's uh, these different things that are happening and there's a lot of characters going on, like, do you feel like you had complete control to kind of wrangle that in? Like, did you feel comfortable when you were flexing those muscles, like you said? Yeah, Noah's quite, um, Noah, Noah has an incredible sort of, I think being, you know, obviously being a writer and a director as well, he has an incredible grasp of what the movie is. Um, and he has, he has a very, very firm control over it. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a sort of school of cinematography where I, I like to sort of, allow the accidental in where possible you know like that, that doesn't mean to say i have a sort of uh vague handle on what's on on, on what we're doing what, what it means is that i don't like i don't like the photography to be sort of like over prescriptive i like us i like to be in a position where we can turn on a dime and sort of see see a better opportunity or see something that we never imagined was going to happen um with a with a film you know obviously any film that um has these kind of large set pieces and and just grows and becomes a bigger machine it's often harder to do that you know as opposed to like i don't know the work of like you know well robbie robbie ryan's work with noah um or you know just just when you're tread when you're finding that line between sort of documentary and fiction and it can be available light and handheld and you know there's this kind of like looseness and this ability to kind of find stuff in the moment i always try to retain that where possible mm -hmm. but on a movie like this or i don't know i shot like mandela which which you know uh, or um you know a big television show the bigger the moving parts the more 
the more sort of nervous that people get in the sense of wanting, uh, you know, um, of wanting the left hand to know what the right hand's doing, you know. So you're trying to protect, you're trying to obviously make the days and and to go in with a very definite plan. But always, I'm always trying to keep my eyes open to the possibilities of something we hadn't considered. And I think Noah, you know, enjoys that as well, you know, as mm. for my experience. Well, that's good to hear because I, I was actually going to ask you about that because I know Noah, like the, the script is, I don't, you probably wouldn't want to call it this, but it's essentially the Bible. Like you don't want to, you know, depart from it too much with his actors. Like it, yeah. what the words are is what the words are. And yeah. so I was curious if he was at all like that when it came to the the cinematography side, like it, that, whether it was the, the larger beats of the film, like they, I, it, it makes sense to me why people would be nervous about it. But even the smaller moments, I wonder like how calculated what it was, but it sounds like he gave you a lot of room. Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, he was a, a, an absolute, um, it was wonderful to collaborate with him. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, the script is the Bible and the words and the dialogue are very important. Um, and I, but I feel in terms of the photography, once you've got, once you've got all of those, you know, you've blocked it and you've got those pieces in place, there is a lot of freedom to go like, oh, what about if we were to, you know, come down the stairs as a POV and that's how, you know, that's how we get into that scene and the audience then doesn't know that then, you know, you, the cut reveals that it's Baba and it's her POV, you know, and it's that, and it's like things like that weren't, um, you know, weren't prescribed in the script, you know, they were just like my, you know, that was, that one example was kind of my take on how it might be quite nice to fit for her to feel that she's kind of detached mm. and you know detached from the scene and things like that so yeah it's it's um you know and, and 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 that ability to do that comes from an invitation from the director to you know to to allow that freedom um yeah. and it also just comes from experience and sort of personal taste i suppose on the day of just you know you'll turn up and see the scene being blocked and i'll just have maybe two or three different ideas about how you might do it. Or maybe sometimes you had all these other ideas and, and you realize how well it plays in a wide shot and you might end up leaning into a wide shot for coverage more than, you know, more than the cutting it up into several beats as you imagined you would when you were shot listing, you know. This uh, next section of my talking to you, I guess we can just call it, uh, how the hell did you do that? So there there are so many beautifully composed shots in here that I could probably eat up most of our time discussing it. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to bring up a few shots. I want you to say what first comes to mind, whether where it came from or what went into achieving it. But I'll start with all these like really quick moments of visual poetry. Like so early, yeah. like there's an early on shot that you have where it's just inside of a trash can it's it's literally there for a second and then we move on but i know that there's a lot that goes into that so whether it's that or framing up adam driver so perfectly that you can the editor can cross dissolve an image of a fire exploding like what are your thoughts about letting those moments kind of fly by versus maybe having an, an impulse to linger on them because it's it's really cool shot and you kind of want to hang around it so how did you know when to stay uh or like say like well that's it but hopefully some meticulous film watchers catch it or maybe they don't and it right. produces a feeling that audiences can't exactly pinpoint but your recipe so to speak got them feeling that way yeah that's an interesting question i mean you know, a lot of it is, you know, it's it's an obvious thing to say, but a lot of it is in the hands of editorial when it comes to it. You know, it's, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you, you, you know, you throw up these ideas and you execute these things. And um, it's interesting, you know, like sometimes there are things that <clears throat> you think clearly didn't, you believe didn't work when you, when you shot them. And then you realize in the context of the movie that they, <clears throat> excuse me, they absolutely do work and, and vice versa. Sometimes you can, you can really think something is, you know, terrific and, um, and it sort of fails in the cut. So it's, it's um, in terms of the sort of length of time or duration of those things, it's kind of out of my hands really. But mm. I suppose it is the desire just to put in as many of those little beats and those little things. Like an example would be, 
uh, in the motel room with Mr. Gray, you know, yeah. um, Lars's character. And uh, I, I could go to town forever on sort of um, having a very shallow depth of field and sort of crawling yeah. over him and sort of and sort of revealing him in this kind of woozy sort of laudanum induced kind of fan, you know, sort of a um, sort of um, hallucination almost of kind of like this character, you know, and I put a lot of stuff in that, but you can't have every single moment in, you know, so it's kind of, you know, um, uh, and, and I think, you know, that's the, the point is that it's a collaboration and, 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 you can't be too indulgent with these things. Like you have to give enough in there to for for the editor and the director to work with. But at the same time, it's um, you know, it's there's a greater, you know, there's a there's a there's a movie to continue with, you know. So it's like you know, you can I, as much as I might want to just kind of like continue looking at this shot I've composed. You know, it's um, it's it's important, obviously, that someone has a can step back and. And, and decide, okay, that's quite enough for that. Let's move on, you know, with the, with the story. I also wanted to talk about the, the shadows that are all throughout here. Like the, sure. the, fan, the fan shot was so cool. Like I was just eating that up the way that you rolled the camera up and as the fans going against the wall and with the, the lights from the outside. And then there's the, the trash bag sequence toward the yeah. end, uh, the way that it just spin around the room. So I'm uh, just curious about like, what went into the thoughts of shadows playing a big part of this? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, it's, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the film is about death, right? Um, yeah, yeah. How do you represent death? I mean, what does the Grim Reaper feel like? You know, it's, um, shadows are, impl you know, just absolutely implicit throughout, you know, the the looming, the looming shadow behind all of us, you know, it's, um, I mean, there, it's, it, there was another point that didn't quite, Another shot that didn't really make it in the movie, but um, there was a nice moment where Babette is um, on the bed in Mink's hotel room on one of her visits to him. We did a, you know, um, almost like in a Nosferatu mm. uh, ode, you know, the um, Mink's, uh, uh, Mr. Gray's hand kind of was cast this big shadow behind, you know, um, to grab her. I mean, it's a bit like um, <clears throat> a bit like uh, 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 Coppola's um, vamp uh, Coppola's Dracula. You know, there's these kind of heightened moments of kind of like you know Gary Oldman's you know depiction of Dracula is this kind of like shadow that just kind of keeps coming in and out. So yeah, it's interesting. I think it's you know it's all there and it's all. Um, it's all great fun to play with, you know, and and I think, you know, those ideas of kind of moving lights and long shadows and things and this kind of like slight uncanniness and unsettling um, ideas of how the light moves and and also kind of like, I don't know if you ever saw Melancholia, the, mm -hmm. the last one, Trier film, you know, but um, there was something really interesting about the lighting in that, which which is kind of disconnected and unmotivated. <clears throat> um, but it's very sort of subtle. It's a bit like a sort of Gregory Crudson photo where you, the light that's hitting the, the, the subjects, the light that's hitting the actors in the landscape isn't quite motivated by, you know, there's not a light in the sky that matches it, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, so that imbues the film with a sort of uncanny, unsettling uh, emotion, I think. Um, and I, you know, with white noise, there were elements of that as well. You know, where, um, like the gas station, I think was a, yeah, a yeah. was a little bit of a kind of nod to that Crudson lighting, and um, and also, you know, all of the interiors they have this kind of very strong. Um, a blue moonlight, you know, that's very much like sort of Heat or um, Manhunter, uh, those kind of like yeah. um, those movies, of the, you know, um, yeah, Michael Mann and um, 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 Adrian Lyne, and those mm -hmm. kind of filmmakers, you know. And again, that's a kind of like my my starting point most of the time is 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 or my sort of taste is kind of naturalism and motivational light and things like motivated light sources. Whereas this was leaning much more into kind of unmotivated light and stylized and heightened, um, heightened lighting techniques and things like that. You know?